a great, a great deal of wisdom, uh, a great deal of wisdom here, which is a bit intimidating, really. I'm sure you, many of you, have been Christians for longer than I have. But, but I have been a Christian for 38 years, and uh, about six years ago, I made a a, a life-changing discovery which is the, the amazing power of blessing, particularly blessing other people. And the simple act of faith, of speaking a blessing over another person, activates God's power. I'll just say that again, that the simple act of faith, I suppose, of speaking a blessing over another person, activates God's love and power. And so I've uh, moved into a what I call a blessing lifestyle, where I bless people in all kinds of situations. Uh, it could be in a cafe, it could be in a car dealership, it could be my dentist or the hairdresser, occasionally on the street, but not that often. Uh, it could be uh, ear hostesses on long distance flights. Uh, it could be uh, uh, cows and Chooks in, in an orphanage in Kenya. Uh, I've blessed uh, wallets and businesses and all kinds of things. And what I have found is that I've grown in more love and more power over these last few years than I have in all the years before that combined. And there's something about this whole thing of giving love away that you end up with more of it. To give away next time, and then you get more of it to give away the next time, like a positive feedback. <coughs> and I was in uh, in Kenya with Chief Whitland in 2016. He allowed me to carry his bag, and uh, and he gave me a, a, a speaking slot. And in that speaking slot, I I shared about the power of blessing that I had discovered at that time, and it turned out to be one of the highlights of the of the whole thing which was uh, quite amazing, really, because they were part of this was a, a, a pastor's gathering, a couple of hundred pastors. And I was persuaded to write a little book um, in the awesome power of blessing it was so back in 2016. And then in 2017, I did a second edition because I felt I learned something over that year. And then I did another one, third edition in 2019. So I was growing, you see, as I, as I went along, and I wanted to, to share that. And then, I, then I, I had so many testimonies coming in from around, from around the world that I didn't want them to, to slip through the cracks, you know. I wanted to record them, so I wrote another book called The Blessing Effect, and How Blessing is Changing the World. And, uh, and it's full of, full of testimonies of all kinds. Um, and then David and Dale Garrett, who you would know from scripture and song, uh, Dale experienced some, a lot of physical healing just out of blessing her body. And so they wanted to write some songs of blessing. So they produced a CD, uh, which was, came out last year. And, did, and then this year, uh, I'm pleased to have done a, uh, organized a Torio uh, translation. It's a bilingual. English on the left page and the corresponding Maori on the right page. And at the end of next week, I'm going up north to get in front of some Maori and see if I can stop those young fellows going to, going to prison because many of them have not had a father's blessing. And so they look for affirmation in the wrong places. <coughs> End up in a gang where they get their affirmation and their belonging and get in trouble. So the results of this have been really outstanding. I can say that because I just feel like a spectator um, and just watching Jesus open doors for these, you know. There's most of, there are now 13 million, uh, 300,000 of these little books in print. I mean, it's huge, isn't it? I mean, 30, and, uh, and it's growing at 150,000 a week. So I should be at a 20 million at about, about this time next year. 
And it's in 48 countries, over 40 languages, and I'm targeting 100 million now, so there's just another 87 million uh, to go. But it's very interesting how how things go, because in the beginning I thought 100,000 was a lot, and then, uh, and then a million seemed to be a lot, and then 10 million seemed to be a lot. And your brain changes, you know. I, I'm now, I'm now, I'm now got a hundred million brain, whereas before I had a one million brain. You know what I mean? Like, it, like the lens, everything kind of changes, and and sometimes I think we think too small. Um, and I've decided I won't be guilty of that. <laughs> and the other amazing thing about this is um, that every brand of church, I'm, most of these books are in Africa, by the way. I have to say. But they're also in places like Park, all the poor countries, actually, like Pakistan and Nepal and Indonesia, those sorts of places. And um, but every brand of church, like Catholics, have bought tens of thousands of these books in Africa, and the Anglicans and the Methodists and the Presbyterians, and um, or really, really every any denomination, universities have bought. Can you believe it? A university buying buying armies, like you know, defence forces. You know that the Congolese army have bought 80,000 of them. Wow. Wow. And, they, and they are a bad lot. And uh, the police, prisons, world vision, Bible school, scripture union, it is staggering. I'm telling you all this so that you'll take notice of what I'm going to say because, because it's, um, it's just amazing. And so why has it had all that success? It's because it works. It's because it works. I've just got to, I've not got enough hands here, we'll get it. We'll do it like this. So what do I mean by, by it works? Well one of the um, one of the one of the great things about it is that so many marriages uh, are restored. Like when husbands start blessing wives yeah. and wives bless husbands, um, something happens. It sort of, um, it just changes everything. And I've got a lot of testimonies around that. And the alien, alienation of parents and children um, being patched up. Forgiveness. You know, a lot of people think forgiveness is enough, but Jesus says to bless those who provoke you. And... Uh, it's one thing to forgive, it's quite another, it's a much bigger step to actually bless the ones who hurt you when you really want to wring their neck, you know? It's a, it's a whole it's a whole other step. But that's where the power is. That's where the power is. See, I've learned all these things just in the last few years. It's really quite amazing. God's, God's provision. You know, there was a pastor in Kenya who was not very happy because his, his church wasn't growing and the offering was small and he was complaining about it. You see, complaining is a really bad idea because complaining locks in what you're complaining about. And that God doesn't like it. So anyway, he heard this message and he decided to bless his church and his congregation and their finances and they all grew. Now what would happen if we blessed this fellowship to grow? What if we blessed this fellowship that the young people would be attracted to it? I'm just saying, because you know, there's this... Just, just thinking about that. And then I've blessed barren wounds and children have come forth. It's amazing, isn't it? And uh, workplaces changed. One of the most amazing things is physical healing. It's in that little blessing book, the um, blessing effect. There's about 25 testimonies of physical healing and some of them are quite serious, like cancer, for example, um, and uh, blindness and that kind of thing. And it makes me realize that when I look at Jesus, that he often healed just with words. He just spoke words. Go home, your, your servant is healed. And then emotional healings. Actually, one of the most amazing things has been the power of the Father's blessing. Because what I discovered, and, uh, and, and I discovered this at, at when I was, the first time I spoke at Promise Keepers, I said, how many of you what did I say? I said, if you, um, 
if you've uh, if you've received it, no, yeah, I know what it was. If your father has laid hands on you and blessed you, would you please put your hand up? And only a handful of people put their hands up out of maybe fifteen hundred people. And then I thought I've asked the question wrong. Uh, if your father has never laid hands on you and blessed you, would you put your hand up? And this great forest of hands went up everywhere. And it's, it's been my experience, of, you know, most of the people here, unless you've, unless you've heard me do this before, most of you have not had that. Statistically, at any rate, most of you have not had that. And when it doesn't happen, there's just, there's a void. It's, you know, it's mandated so strongly, particularly in the Old Testament. Salvations. Do you know I had the, um, the bishop of the AOG in Malawi, he looks after, I think, East Africa. He wrote to me and he said that over two million people have come to Christ as a result of your blessing book. Wow. Now, isn't that staggering? Now, I don't know how he knows that. I don't know if he counted them. Um, but, you know, I had another, another uh, note from uh, the Seventh-day Adventist church over there. And, and I don't know what the time period was, but they said that we have baptised over 100,000 people as a result of this blessing message. So this is a big deal. I've also um, had some experience at blessing situations as distinct from blessing people. And um, particularly situations of dispute. Like there's an issue about how a will is being split up or there's a, a dispute with a supplier or, or this kind of thing. And providing the people who ask me to do this are prepared to put their, their situation into neutral instead of asking God to bless what they want, um, then, uh, then I'm, I, I bless those things. And I've seen some quite remarkable turnarounds. There's a whole story around that. But anyway, um, so how did all this start? It's really interesting, and it really involves a change of thinking about blessing, because most of us, when we think about blessing, we're thinking about it as a noun. Uh, like, um, what, a, uh, what a great blessing. Or, um, but I'm using it as a verb. The verb to bless. So like, it's an action word. I bless you in the name of Jesus kind of thing. And so it, it, it does involve a change of thinking. And the way that it started, I was in New Caledonia, which is a French territory. It's where my wife comes from. So I've had to learn a bit of French. And I was giving a teaching to a, a, a Catholic French prayer group, actually. I wanted to talk to them about cursing, because there's a lot of witchcraft, even among the Catholics. And so I discovered that the French word for cursing is um, a malediction, or mal malediction. And the French word for blessing is benediction. Now, as it happens, I found out that that there is actually a word malediction in the English dictionary, and it comes from the Latin. And you can see mal uh, malediction is bad speaking, and benediction is good speaking. Just looking at the root of the word. Now, when you put cursing and blessing side by side in, the, in English, you don't see that. You don't see anything in common with them at all. But when you put malediction and benediction side by side, you see that this diction thing or this speaking thing is in common. And so cursing is bad speaking, and blessing is good speaking. And so um, I knew that cursing was powerful. And in some cultures, it can make you very sick, or you can die. And by comparison, I'd seen blessing as being quite a low voltage word, quite a fluffy little word. Somebody sneezes and you say, bless you. <laughs> and so, you know, in my mind, in fact, I believe in hindsight that... Uh, Satan has really trivialized uh, the use of this word blessing. And um, because it's so powerful. Anything that's powerful, Satan attacks, like tongues, for example, hugely attacked. And now we have, you know, this. And so, um, so I said to myself, if cursing has the power, has that much power, why shouldn't blessing have at least as much power? And so you know, I refer to the Bible, and we know that we can speak either words of life or words of death. So you could say that cursing is speaking words of death, 
that is to say words of criticism, mocking, humiliating kind of words, um, or we speak words of life. The blessing is speaking words of life. And it's true in the natural and it's true in the supernatural. So for example, in the natural, I could say to my son, uh, you're a useless fellow, you'll never amount to anything. And some of you have probably had that said over you. That's a curse. You know, I had a man come to me, or I've several times actually, people come to me and they say, every time I get close to succeeding at something, it's like it gets snatched away. And that's the curse in operation. And on, on the other hand, the, the, father, the, the, the father could say to his son, that's a clever little hut you built in the backyard. You could be a great architect one day. And the father has just spoken words of life, words of encouragement. And the son will never forget it, you know, this kind of thing. So that's true in the natural, whether you're a Christian or not. But it's very true in the supernatural. So the witch doctor, for example, when he curses you, he's speaking words of death with the power of Satan behind them. But here's the thing, is here's the revelation. We as spirit-filled Christians... We can speak words of life with the power of God behind them. So we can speak, we can speak and release the kingdom of God. We can speak and release God's intentions and favor over people and expect the kingdom of God to swing in behind what we're saying in order to perform what we're saying. Now that is, that is the idea, that is the, that's the fundamental concept with the kind of blessing that I'm talking about. It's speaking and releasing the kingdom of God over someone else, usually, but over yourself as well, or over a situation. And I've learned how to do that. So here it is. I've discovered that I can speak and release God's intentions and favor over people or situations in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Richard. There's no power in that name. But in the name of Jesus, and thereby activate... God's power to perform what is spoken. And isn't that amazing? Don't you think that's powerful? It's incredibly powerful, isn't it? And it's our responsibility to do this. And most of us are not doing this. Because most of us have not woken up to the fact that we are dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. That we have authority to do this. And the thing is that now hundreds of thousands of people have discovered that they can do this as well. And it's a totally different kind of Christianity to what most people are used to. It's more powerful, it's more exciting experience of God's love in action. I think that's cool. <laughs> so, how to do it. The first thing um, is to actually realize the spiritual authority that we carry. You know, when I was in New Caledonia, I was preparing a message for a prayer group, and I was sitting on a mountaintop, a high hill anyway, and I felt God say to me, you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. And then later on, if you did, if you did know who you were, you could change the world. So he said, I'm actually changing the world. I've decided that I'm changing the world. So what happened was, I used to go into my business, Colmar Brunton Research. Are you getting a lot of feedback, or, or is it just me hearing it? No? Is it all right? Is my like, speaking reasonably clearly? Okay. So I used to go into my business, which was Colmar Brunton Research. You'd have seen the poll on TV um, from time to time. And I would go in there, and I'd, I had this desire to bless the business. So I'd sneak in there early, about 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'd walk all around the place uh, saying, God bless, comma, Brunton, and a whole lot of other good things as well. But nothing ever really seemed to happen. I didn't feel anything, and I didn't see any result of it. And one day I changed, and I was a bit scared to change, I have to say. thought maybe a lightning bolt might strike me down or something, because I had a lot of funny ideas back in those days. And, um, but I said, comma, Brunton, I bless you. I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I didn't get struck by a lightning bolt, I got struck by a warm honey anointing coming over me, you know. And every time I've done it, uh, 
and I've done it hundreds of times, the same thing happened. And I think that God was saying to me, yes, son, you've got it. That's what I want you to do. So this is a really, a really big deal because I'm saying, don't ask God to bless people. Don't ask God to move the mountain. He's told us to speak to it and move it. You know, don't, don't ask God to heal the sick. He's told us to do it in his name. We don't ask God to cast out demons. We cast them out in, in his name, with his authority. And um, I know initially when I brought this message, a lot of people were quite shocked. Um, but there's another book called The Grace Outpouring, which I think many of you would have read. Um, and, and they say exactly the same thing. They say, I, I bless you. And it's a very difficult habit to break. Most of you are, are, are used to saying, God bless you. And it's just as effective as saying, God heal you. Uh, which I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do, but I'm saying it's far more powerful when you start to use your authority and kick these things out in the name of Jesus. It is, it is a partnership. So my job and your job is to speak and release. The Holy Spirit's job is to, is to do the business. I can't heal anyone, nor can you probably. So it's, when, when, when we speak to a disease and command it to go in the name of Jesus, we're speaking and releasing the kingdom, but it is God who is doing the healing. And it's the same with blessing. My job is to speak and release the blessing. It's God's job to perform the blessing, providing, of course, I'm speaking God's intentions in favour and not making up my own agenda, okay? So, it's a partnership. And you'll be aware of the blessing that says, um, may the love of God, the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the, the fellowship of the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Or well, the word kunoia, which I think is translated fellowship and communion, can also be translated partnership. And uh, and this is what it is. I, I, I found this, um, something that the, the people who wrote the Passion Translation wrote, as a prophecy. And I think it is so, so right. It says this, come closer and let's talk about who you truly are. You are not only my beloved child, but my beautiful bride. Now here's the bit. You are the mouthpiece that I speak through. Say my name and all heaven and hell take notice. You are the hands that I, that I heal through. Watch how I will lead you to others who need my touch. You are my partner in ministry. Together, we will release light into darkness. So that's our mandate. I'm utterly convinced of this. We've got a part to play, and the Holy Spirit's got a part to play, and that's the way he set it up. He doesn't need us, but he wants us. He wants us involved. I don't think any of you would dispute that, would you? I don't think so. And um, now, the, now, the other... The other thing that is really, really important, or well, by the way, don't underestimate what I've just shared, because when you leave here, maybe with good intentions, you will fall into the God bless you trap very, very quickly. And once again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm saying it's far more powerful if you, if you, if you take responsibility and use your authority and speak to release the kingdom. Now the second thing I've discovered that's really important is that we have a clean, a clean mouth. And what do I mean by that? Um, God said to Jeremiah, if you will utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you should be as my mouth. Isaiah comes into the presence of God. He doesn't say suddenly, I'm full of lust, I'm full of pride, I'm a, what does he say? He says, woe in me, for I am a man of unclean lips. Fancy getting pinged for that. <laughs> I can think of a lot of other things one could be pinged for, but he was pinged for being a man of unclean 
that is, but that's how important it is in God's sight. And so God clinged to it. See, God wanted to use Isaiah to speak to the people of Israel, but he had to clean his mouth first. James says, don't let blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth. And Jesus said, you'll be accountable for every careless word that comes out of your mouth. So, it seems to me that God will empower everything that comes out of your mouth. And so he can't, he can't let you, he can't let you do that. Because if you say, look at that silly fellow on the bike, he's going to crash and break his neck. That's what would happen. So if you want to have power in your mouth, you've got to watch what you say. You've got to watch what comes out of it. This is really, really important. I have got to be very, I've become very careful what I say now. You know, when you say things like, I'm sick and tired, or something so, so then you wonder why you're sick and tired, for example. Um, I came out of my gym the other day and I said, my legs are killing me. Well, I repented instantly because I'm very sensitive to this kind of thing now, you know. Or you say, my memory's terrible. Or you say, oh, we, we curse ourselves pretty much every day with the stupid things that we say that come out of our mouth. In fact, there's a whole... Well, I usually do a workshop when I do this thing over a few hours and actually get people to recognise how they curse themselves, but there's no time for that here. And the other thing that is really important is, we, is that we do this in love because there's no real power from God. Uh, or, or let's put it this way, love is the carrier wave of God's power. So this is not a mechanical thing. And when I teach people how to do this, I just, I just feel God's love for them. You know, I was at, I was just in a glow thing the other day and I I wanted to show people what is the difference between intercession and blessing. So with intercession, for example, you're asking God to intervene in a situation. But when you're blessing, you're actually speaking on God's behalf to a situation. They're quite reverse. And I wanted to demonstrate this by, for example, um, I said, does anyone here... Um, who needs God's peace. And one lady put her hand up and as she came up and she as she got close to me and I was getting ready to, to lay a hand on her, she just I just suddenly burst into tears because I could feel God's love for her. And as soon as I touched her, she she would also into tears. <laughs> and we ended up hugging would never God so God stole the the Holy Spirit stole the show completely and he went ahead. And he does this because when, you, when you're blessing people like this, the Holy Spirit is activated and he just goes ahead. He does his thing. It's the most beautiful and amazing thing. I could talk about this for ages and ages and ages. So I'll just give you, um, and I know that um, I've only got a certain amount of time, and I want to finish by doing the Father's blessing with you guys, if you wouldn't mind. This, well, I'll come back to that. But let me just finish by, not finish, but finish this bit. And give you an example of a good and a bad blessing. So we'll start with the bad blessing. Here's a lady who's been married to her. I made that up. Married to married to Fred, and um, and he drinks too much. So she might say to God, "This is a bad blessing. God bless Fred. Make him give up drinking and make him listen to me." So that I can I can understand totally where that's coming from. But what she has done is in saying. God bless Fred. She's delegating this whole thing to God. God, you take care of this. She's got no skin in the game at all. It's whiny and it's judgmental. And it's not God's style. So God's style is to look at Gideon and say, mighty man of valor. God's looking at the gold, not the dirt. And we have to look. We have to look for the gold when we bless as well. We're not wallowing around in people's dirt. That's what Satan does. He knows about that gold, but he causes by by the dirt. So, and the other thing is that we are very. I'm very intentional about it. Now I could go on and on about this, but I do want to f to f finish by by blessing you in the particular way, which I call the Father's blessing. For, for several reasons. One is I want you to experience it for yourself. 
And secondly, I want you to do it. You know, Paul said there are many teachers, but not many fathers. And you guys, or most of you anyway, with a few exceptions, you qualify as fathers. You've got the grey hair, you've got the experience, you've got respect. Some of you are not grey hair yet, but you look like you look like you've been around. <laughs> and um, and ladies, I have to tell you also that this scope for a mother's blessing as well, and I have received the mother's blessing, and it brought me to tears. Okay, but right now I'm really focused on the on the, the father's blessing. And the very last words of the Old Testament in Malachi, we talk about the spirit of Elijah coming and the heart of the fathers turning to the children and the children to the fathers. So this is a really big deal. You know, I think that fatherless, fatherlessness is one of the curses of, of these days. And... Um, So the way this works is like this. I'm going to ask you over the next few minutes to allow me to speak the Father's blessing over you, even if you've had it before. Most people I know who've had this two or three times, they say it gets better each time. Because not everything is healed in one go. And so I'm going to speak and release a blessing over you, but it is the Holy Spirit who does the blessing. I'm just the delivery boy. It's really important that. And I'm going to ask you to stand if you want to receive this, because I think the Holy Spirit responds to three H's. One is honor, and one is humility, and one is hunger. And I think we honor God by standing, and uh, we may want to open up our hands in humility to receive. But what you receive is probably going to be related to how hungry you are. So if you would like that, then I'm going to ask you to stand. If you can. So I've just said that this is the work of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit doesn't turn up, then this is not going to be to be very much at all. But he always comes. And can I tell you this? He's more hungry to do this than I am. And I am hungry to do this because I love doing this. So come Holy Spirit. Lord, upon each man and woman standing, Lord. These beautiful people, Lord, that I know that you love them. Lord, I ask you to come upon them in love and in power. I love you, my child. You're special. You're unique. You're a gift from God to me. And I'm so proud to be your dad. I love you so much. And I'm proud of you. I believe in you. I'm there for you. And I ask you to forgive me. The things I've said and done that have hurt you. And for the things that I haven't done. And for the words I didn't speak that you long to hear. And I bless you with the healing of all the wounds of your heart. And there are many. Wounds, the wound of rejection particularly, which comes in many forms. Abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, 
verbal abuse, emotional abuse. There's the wound of disappointment, the wound of failure, maybe a business failure, a marriage failure. Well, Jesus said, I'll come to heal the wound of the heart. So Jesus, in this precious moment, I ask that you would run your ointment over the major wounds, Lord, in these people's lives. And in the name of Jesus, I break off you the power of every cruel and unjust word that's never been spoken over you. Every cruel and mocking and humiliating word, every word curse that's been spoken over you, I break their power right now in the name of Jesus. Every witch's curse even, I break their power right now in Jesus' name. And I bless you with overflowing peace, which comes uniquely from the Prince of Peace. And I bless you to be successful in all that you undertake. And I break over you what I see as being a glass ceiling a ceiling of limitation because of lies that you believed about your worth. Lies that have been spoken over you that I'm not good enough or I'm unlovable or God couldn't use someone like me or I'm not clever enough or I'm not good looking enough or I'm too fat or too thin or something wrong with me. I break every every glass ceiling, every limitation. I break it now in the name of Jesus. And I call forth your giftedness. I call forth your potential. I call forth big thinking big dreams I call forth more in the name of Jesus and I bless you with health and strength that you would live out all the days assigned to you to complete the assignment that God gave to you from the beginning of time. I bless you to be the lights in the world, salt of the earth. I bless you with influence. I bless you with lots and lots of influence, way more than you can see at the moment. I bless your vision to be enlarged in the name of Jesus. You will not stumble nor falter, for the word of God is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. And finally, I bless you that God will give you a revelation in the deepest part of your being of how much he utterly adores you and loves you and likes you and looks forward to meeting with you every day. I bless your love tanks to be enlarged 
that your capacity to hold more and more of his love, the height and the depth and the length and the breadth, and that you would steward these love tanks, that they would be full to overflow. With more love, Lord. More love, Lord. More love, Lord. Kurishikina Malasha Vasakari. More love, Lord. Fill, Lord. Fill, Lord. Fill, Lord. And Lord, let there be a stirring up. A stirring up, Lord, an activation, Lord, of the authority that they're walking in. Let there be a deposit of courage and boldness. Lord, increase sensitivity to the voice of your spirit. And you are blessed, my child, with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 There's no end to where this could work to go. So I think my time is up. Is that right? My time is up. So at least I had five more minutes. Well, sit down, sit down. I just want to, you know, one of the things, um, one of the things that I realised as I got into this was that there are many different situations. Like, for example, there's the, the situation where someone curses you or humiliates you or wrongs you or provokes you in some way. How to respond to that? And then, as I said before, so many of us actually curse ourselves. And I could do a whole thing around that just by itself. This, how do you bless your spouse or your children or your dwelling place or your workplace or your community, your city, your nation, and even blessing God himself? So I'd just like to do one of these things. Um, I've got some notes here somewhere because... Although I know this stuff backwards, I don't want to forget anything. <laughs> um, I, I use the expression total forgiveness because, and what I mean by that is that if we add blessing to forgiveness, I call that total forgiveness. So, you know, Peter says don't return evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but instead bless because this is what you were called to do then you will inherit the blessing. And this is absolutely amazing. You know, I used to get provoked in the traffic sometimes, um, particularly Auckland traffic. And I do remember going down State Highway uh, 18, 16 it was, when all the roadworks were going on and it was an 80 kilometre restriction. And every now and then, some, no, I almost said a, a, the wrong word, but somebody would go past very fast. And the old Richard would probably have wanted to make a sign in, in their direction with my fingers, but you know, or, or call them an irreverent name. Um, but I don't do that anymore. So what I do now is I say, um, I bless the driver of that car in the name of Jesus. May the love of God pursue, usually it's a hymn, May the love of God pursue him and overtake him and arrest him in the name of Jesus. And you know, I really had a good laugh about this. So I had moved from being a victim to being in control. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, there's that promise by Peter because he says, well, well actually, this, he says you will inherit the blessing. Now, there's three things about this. One is, as I said, I've moved from being a victim to being in control. Um, but it also chops off that toxic squirt of bitterness, mm -hmm. which will watch your bones. Mm -hmm. 
and guess what? I receive a blessing. And uh, so it's a very good deal. I really recommend it. Um, but of course there are situations far more serious than that. And uh, I remember one day a, a lady came up to me for prayer one day and her husband had left her and she was struggling financially, emotionally as he comes up for prayer. Anyway, to cut a long story short, somewhere along the line I asked her if she could forgive her husband. And she said yes, which I thought was pretty meritor meritorious, meritorious. And then I said to her, now I'd like you to bless him. Ooh. <laughs> That's another step, isn't it? You can, you can sort of feel that. That is another step now. But I'm not talking about blessing him with a new wife and a new car and a new boat. Not at all. I'm talking about... Um, it could go something like this. It could be, uh, uh, I bless you, my husband, in the name of Jesus. May all of God's plans and purposes for your life come to pass. Amen. And may you become the man of God and the husband and the father that God always purposed for you to be. Now that's a much, you can see the difference, or you can see, and, and you know what happened, that when she did that, the anointing fell on her. And because I was standing in front of her, I got it as well. We were both bawling our eyes out in front of everybody. Because the Holy Spirit came and just hit us. And I can tell you a story about a, um, about a lady who was involved in a car accident 20 years earlier. And her neck had stiffened up so much that she couldn't look in the rear vision mirror. Like she couldn't, she wasn't allowed to drive. And somebody said to her, um, have you forgiven the driver of the other car? And she said, yes, over and over and over. But have you blessed him? No, I haven't. So she blessed the driver of the other car. This was 20 years ago. And the next morning when she woke up, her neck was completely free. Wow. Just like that. I'm just saying the power is in the blessing. And I could tell you more stories like that about well, lots of things like that there. In fact, I remember one guy who came up. In fact, this guy needed, needed deliverance. And he wasn't my customer. He was someone else's. But the meeting ran out of, was running out of time. And so I was given charge of this person to take them away to a separate room so it wouldn't disturb the meeting. So I took a couple of guys with me. And there's no doubt this guy was demonized because he had a mocking spirit and it was very loud and I could hear it. But when we went out to the room, I said to him, did your father ever lay hands on you and bless you? See, I use this all the time. And he said no. And 95, in fact, nearly always they say no. So I said, may I bless you in your father's place so that you don't miss out on the blessing God always wanted you to have. He said, okay. And I came to the part where I asked for, for forgiveness. Would you forgive me for things that I've said and done? And the, he said, no. I said, why is that? He said, my father used to beat me. And one time he beat me so badly, I had to go to hospital. And you're asking me to forgive him. <coughs> but I persisted because there was, there was no point in trying to do a deliverance when Satan has legal right to torment somebody because they haven't forgiven and eventually, what seemed like a long time, but probably wasn't, he just fell to his knees. He said, I forgive you. I forgive you. And I said, would you bless, would you bless your dad? And he did. And he just broke down totally, and the demons left pretty much just automatically. They knew that they knew what was coming, and they had no right to be there anymore. So this is a very, 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 very big deal. And I, and I better stop there. But, you know, if you, those little books there, you can get two of those books for the cost of a flat white. And, and there's a lot of detail in there about how to bless your wife. I mean, you, I, know, <coughs> I know you probably know a lot of the stuff. But nonetheless, I'll get, what I've learned, I'll put in there. And how to bless your children and the Father's blessing. Or so we of us different versions of it, of course. Um, but, you know, one thing I would like to do, I don't know if, if this would be all right or not. The Father's blessing, 
has made an enormous impact everywhere. Even people reading it. I've had people say to me, I read this piece out loud and I was, I was soaked in tears. And I would really love to um, anoint what I have, I'd like to impart to any male here, any man here who would like to bless the fatherless. I mean, it's, it's obvious that you should bless your own children, okay? But the real challenge is, will you, will you bless the fatherless, people that are not your own children, just like I've done tonight? It is amazing what happens when you do it. It really is. So if you, if you men, if any of you men would like that, I just ask you to come up here.